Greetings. I'm Michael Quinn Patton, here to reflect on the 2022 Word of the Year. Actually, there are a number of Words of the Year because each major dictionary selects its own Word of the Year. They base their selection on sometimes the frequency with which a word has been searched or new words that have entered the lexicon. And so I've looked at those many different choices and want to feature two words of the year for 2022 that I think have special significance for those of us involved in evaluation, policy analysis, systems analysis, or just generally trying to make sense of the present and the future. French existential philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre famously said, words are loaded pistols. They make a difference in how we think, they affect how we communicate, and the language is forever changing with new words added, as has happened in 2022. In evaluation, we've long had an interest in language and understand the importance of language, highlighted in this volume of New Directions for Evaluation on How and Why Language Matters in Evaluation, edited by Rodney Hobson. And so the 2022 Word of the Year that I want to feature comes from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary and is Gaslighting. In announcing its 2022 choice for Word of the Year, Merriam-Webster Dictionary said, quote, in this age of misinformation, of fake news, conspiracy theories, Twitter trolls, and deep fakes, gaslighting has emerged as a word for our time. It's a driver of disorientation and mistrust. Gaslighting is, quote, the act or practice of grossly misleading someone, especially for one's own advantage. The word originated from the title of a 1938 play in which a husband was trying to drive his wife insane. He was manipulating the house lights, making them dim, making them bright, but insisting to her that the lights were consistent and it was only her imagination. He was gaslighting her. The announcement noted that there are lots of words for gaslighting, mislead, lie, fib, falsehood, untruth, deceit, prevarication, fib, disinformation. But they said in their announcement, quote, in recent years, with the vast increase in channels and technologies used to mislead, gaslighting has become the favored word for the perception of deception. This is why, trust us, it has earned its place as our word of the year. Before discussing the implications of gaslighting for those of us who work in research and evaluation, attempting to generate information that's true, valid, reliable, and useful, let me turn to the second word of the year. The second 2022 word of the year comes from the Collins Dictionary and is permacrisis, an extended period of instability and insecurity, especially one resulting from a series of catastrophic events. David Shariat Madari said in a blog post introducing the word for Collins, quote, permacrisis is a term that perfectly embodies the dizzying sense of lurching from one unprecedented event to another, as we wonder bleakly what new horrors might be around the corner. My own choice for word of the year would not be permacrisis, but a related term, polycrisis. I had the distinct honor and frightening experience of participating in a three-day conference on the polycrisis in the summer of 2022. The conference involved scholars, change agents, experts in various kinds of crises coming together under the umbrella of the polycrisis. This moves the discussion from events. Permacrisis is a series of event-type crises to overall trends, what the interlocking, mutually reinforcing, overlapping, and interdependent crises are 
that create a mega crisis, syndemic crises, poly crisis. The climate emergency, the COVID pandemic, global hunger increasing, economic turbulence, misinformation and disinformation, gaslighting, the global inequities and injustices increasing. All of these issues intersecting together, the loss of biodiversity, the extinction of species, the acidification of the ocean, pollution of the air and land, the increased world population. We hit 8 billion people in 2022. The doomsday clock, which especially focuses on the increased threat of nuclear war, cyber terrorism, the dark underbelly of the internet that threatens financial systems, infrastructure, communications worldwide, a field that has emerged called collapsology, which studies the potential for general collapse of societies induced by climate change, scarcity of resources, vast extinctions, and natural disasters. Books like How Everything Can Collapse and Jared Diamond's book on collapse are examining closely how permacrisis, polycrisis, collapsology threatens the future of human beings on the earth. Works like The Collapse of Complex Societies by Joseph Tainter, Greenhouse Planet by Louis Ziska, Peter Nemitz's Unsustainable World, Are We Losing the Battle to Save Our Planet, and many others examine the potential for life on Earth, at least human life, to be severely changed, if not extinguished. And yet there are other views on this. Apocalypse Never by Michael Schellenberger, the answering response that new developments, new technologies, new ways of engaging the world give us hope for a more sustainable and equitable future. Where do evaluators sit in this? How do we deal with the poly crisis? Well, part of our responsibility is to acknowledge that there are good things happening and bad things happening. There's good news and bad news. There's optimism and pessimism. And we end up having an important role in trying to sort out what's going on, what the trends are, to engage people in dialogue and take these factors into account in the design and implementation of change programs and their evaluation. Those of us in research and evaluation are in a battle against post-truth, fake news, alternative facts, make-believe, groupthink, distortions, all the forms of gaslighting as we work to bring forward facts, evidence, truth, data, reality, and thinking. And so what we are committed to, it seems to me, in 2023 and beyond, is no gaslighting the permacrisis, the polycrisis. No making light of it, no ignoring it, no gaslighting it, but a genuine evidence-based discussion of the trends in the world and their implications for policies and programs of all kinds. Those of us in research and evaluation have an important critical role to play in ensuring that the issues facing the future of humanity, the polycrisis, the permacrisis, the mega crises, call it what you will, but address it. Address it seriously with evidence. No gaslighting, the polycrisis.